Welcome guys to one of our another episode Unplugged with Jazz O'Broy. The guest today I have it. I don't think so he need an introduction. He's a prominent personality in the community out there but just for some viewers who don't know him, he's a businessman, he's an entrepreneur and he has seen lot of up and downs in his life. But today again as I said it before, he's a prominent personality out there and let me take this opportunity to introduce him Mr. Raj Admi. Thank, Thank you, you sir. so much. Thank, Thank you, you brother. Much, Thanks really for coming in. Thank you for having me, right? No, no. Uh, a very humble introduction. <laughs> okay, no, you, you deserve everything, Raj. Whatever I said, it, it's not being anything yeah. fake. People who are watching this, they already know who you are. And thanks for, I know you're a busy person and thanking for sparing your time. Appreciate it. And coming you. on to here. And Raj, I don't know whether you know it or not. Actually, I have met you before too. And that was about, what, 12, 13 years ago. Probably more. It's yes. In downtown. Downtown. Yeah. They say downtown. 2008, actually. Yeah. yeah. And... I yeah. served you. You were working as a, uh, server. As a server. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I do remember. I think back then we had a few more drinks too, but uh, <laughs> I, I still tend to remember some things. Right. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's amazing if you still remember me because I was one of the servers there. So I was just, and the owners introduced me saying it, he's a big short guy. So make sure you serve him better, you will get a good tips. And you tip me good. <laughs> so I remember it. I'm glad, thank God I did that back then. <laughs> <laughs> you tip me good. So I said, okay. Yeah. yeah. So Those are different times for sure. Yes, it yeah. was a different time. Yeah. Time has changed. But now here we are, Raj. I have uh, seen your journey following you constantly. But one of the, actually the main reason I wanted to reach out to you is actually one of your podcasts, I listened to it. Mm -hmm. And you told about your journey, which I didn't know it. And maybe a lot of other people will not be knowing it. If you could touch base a little bit more about that side of your story, how you started as a self-employed and how your right. journey throughout been, what are the up and downs you have seen it? Um, my journey obviously started when I was a very young, as a young entrepreneur. As, as the, 12, 13 years old, I was actually um, trying to sell things on the internet through uh, modem lines. Yes. Um, and it was, uh, I don't know, I should disclose this, but at the time, I guess I couldn't get charged now, but back yes. then it was pirated software. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, what I would do is, as, you know, I'd reach out. I mean, back then the web was very different. Uh, you could sell uh, things um, through your data line, which people could download. So I had set up this little page where um, if somebody wanted, let's just say, uh, you know, a, a pirated uh, uh, software game or something, they would have to mail me $20, then I would allot a few hours on yes. my telephone line for them to download it from my from uh, from my house um, you know, and how old you were that time uh, about 12 13 years old 12 13 years uh, old so is it was that your family was always been into the business your dad was in a business that's how you learned dad's uh, you know dad started when he came from India he started started as a heavy duty mechanic okay and from there on in he had that entrepreneurial spirit right so you know his, his story in a nutshell was fixing uh, excavating machines from there he bought an excavating machine from the excavating machine he realized that he was doing it for people that were building houses so he would excavate the lot for them then he bought a lot from there he realized oh i can just build the house i yes. can build the house then and then from there he said oh i can even sell the house he became a real estate agent so he oh know, he was a realtor he, too? he was a realtor too oh, he was okay. in the medallion club president's oh, medallion nice. club okay i didn't know uh, this okay yeah, in uh, and multiple realty in vancouver mm, nice. yeah so he so i saw his journey and we came from very humble beginnings Right. You know, our family was very poor. I have distinctive memories of, you know, my, my parents struggling, living in a basement, being talked down to, um, you know, and I was, you know, in my, you know, early years, probably right. four or five, six years old, but I still remember that. I remember even the place we lived, my dad couldn't stand up straight because the ceiling was too low. So we oh, were living in that kind of basement. Um, and, you know, and I just saw the prog progression, yes. right? And, you know, seeing that, and then also my dad coming from a mil military background in India, um, you know, he was very hard on me because he knew, he goes, I was his ticket to go <laughs> to the next level as well. Right. Fortunately, he made it on his own as well, um, but he taught me the right things um, to become successful on my own. So when at the age of 13, your dad was still doing the business or he was working for somebody? At that, at that time, uh, he was a real estate agent. He was a real estate yeah, agent. So yeah, you yeah, already yeah. saw it in the family, like how Correct. entrepreneurial skills and what it has not, then yeah. it has come to it. And, and I saw, what I, when I, in those younger years, I realized that, okay, first, dad become, coming from India, being an immigrant, you know, when we're born and raised here, yes. we, we have much more knowledge and we're, yeah. we're, we're, we can easily adapt. It was more difficult for him to transition to this country to make those changes. Yes. So I thought in my, you know, when my younger years, I go, I'm going to blow up because if dad can do it, 
I have, I mean, there's, I, I have endless possibilities on my own. Right. So yes. that was my encouragement, right? Yes. And so at the age of 13, you started the, the pirated thing. I could yeah. say that, right? So, yeah. <laughs> and then what age did you start it actual running a proper business mind? Like, so, um, when I was, I think 17, 18, um, I was still going to school and university and stuff like that. Um, I started uh, building, renovating uh, things for people. Um, one of the uh, contracts I got at a young age, and that was actually uh, helpful because they were going in one of my dad's facilities. So mm -hmm. it was an H&R Block accounting office. So they had to go out to go to tender to go get uh, the renovations done in the space. So I said, hey, I, you know, my dad used to keep me, keep me around the construction sites. He had me actually manage his sites, yes. you know, when in my teens. So I knew how to build. I knew, I knew all the mechanics and, and, and how to put the right people together. Plus, I knew that the trades I had access to. So I said, I can just start doing renovations on my own. You know, doing working for my dad was great learning curve, but I got no money, yeah. right? My money was roti. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so I go, this has to change. I have yeah. to earn. Yeah, dad right? is not paying me, so I have exactly. to do something else. Exactly. Right? You know, our typical Indian yeah, yeah, fathers, I right? Yes. <laughs> I give you everything. I give you a roof and roller. You just work. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was fortunate enough to, uh, you know, have the opportunity to bid on this thing. And obviously I didn't have any overhead. I was a kid. Mm. I was living in my mom and dad. Yes. So I could under, uh, bid everybody, uh, uh, doing this renovation projects. So I got the first contract. Not only did I build this H and R block accounting office, you know, but I was also able to, uh, form a connection with the guys that gave out the contracts. So were you also <sighs> like a, one of the trademen in there or you were just supervising? Just it? supervising. Yeah. Oh, that was a smart thing to do, do yeah. it. So just supervising at the age of what, 18, 19? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, oh, did you ever face a challenge when those tradesmen were not listening to you because usually they are into their 30s I, and I, they will say right. like, okay, there's a young kid telling me how to do those things. I, I did face those challenges, but the good thing that I realized at a young age was money. Hmm. Is you just got to put money in front of somebody and it doesn't matter how old you are, yeah. they, want, they want it. Right? They wanted it, yes. So, you know, I, if I gave him a contract, I said, look, here's the funds. You may think I'm young, but here's the funds and trust. If you don't believe I'm going to pay you, yeah. just complete the job. Job. And okay. then... Obviously, after the first couple, they got hmm. comfortable and they said, holy, this kid's it's, actually pretty smart <laughs> and he's getting, we're making money off of him. Yeah. So let's keep continuing. That so when path. you pick up the first one, what was going through your head? Was it the experience when you were saying underbidding it, but obviously you still wanted to make some money on it. So how you run the numbers at that time, some, well, a new I, guy wanted to so start it. To give you an example on those things, there were about a, uh, back then there were about $80,000 contracts. Okay. The, out of the $80,000 contract, there was about, uh, about a 25% margin. The margins were a lot higher back then. Hmm. Um, so potentially I could make, you know, $25,000, $30,000 profit on each office. And we, I ended up building 50 of them. Um, oh, nice. But the first one, it was actually excitement because I knew, I said, okay, the guys that are bidding this, they have a, you know, they have an office, they have a corporation. Yes. They're not going to be able to, you know, the same uh, administration uh, cost that I can do, which is zero. Yeah. I'm doing my own accounting. I'm doing my own management. I have no living expenses. So there's, I'm not even paying myself a wage. I just want the pure profit where they were structuring it as all top admin fees, yes. their own fees and all that kind of stuff. So I, I just said, okay, I'm going to just make 10% on this one, see what happens. I had underbid them so much so that, that I got the job. And then I started realizing. I'm, oh, I'm actually cutting myself short. Yes. So I, I made ten thousand dollars on the first one. Second one, I made I made eighteen thousand dollars. I think it was. This is which we are talking. Which year? Sorry. Uh, probably. Well, in the year it would have been. I would have been just in my teens. So eighteen. No, but 19. actual year. What was this? Nineteen. So in the nineteen. Yeah, it should have been nineteen. Uh, probably. 1990, 90, 90, late, late, mid 90s, maybe? mid 90s, but yeah, at that yeah, time, ten thousand yeah. dollars is not a small amount for especially no. a guy who's just eighteen years old. I was loaded, and yeah, <laughs> but okay. even before that, how did, I understand you get the opportunity to put bid in in the bid to begin with. How did you even get the opportunity to bid? Because these big companies, they don't count, let the rookie come no, close to them. No, and that's why when I originally uh, started. The way the, the way I got in was they were going into one of my dad's spaces. Understood. Okay. And my dad oh, said, that's what use, my, "Use my use my or you at least let my, my son yes. bid on it." Yes, bid yeah, on it, yeah, and that's it how you get into got, it. That's got my foot in the door. Foot into the door, and then yeah. the portfolio grows because you once you built it, then the credibility is there. Correct. There, that's right, right. Right. Okay. Okay. So from there. Um, I went into, and it's still like, you know, it, construction was easy for me because I understood it. Yes. But operating a business wasn't, and that's what I was going to school for, learning mm -hmm. marketing, learning commerce, learning business admin, all that kind of stuff, learning marketing. Um, but in that midst, I decided to buy a franchise. 
Okay. And the franchise was a Quiznos mm. franchise. Okay. And, you know, I said, okay, I can kill, still keep doing the construction because I'm making good money out of this. I could buy this franchise for 250 grand right. um, and, you know, have some extra passive income, just put a manager in there to work it. What I didn't realize at the time was that was my best life lesson ever yeah. because that business then taught me everything else about business, yes. how to hire, how to market, how to control my product cost, right. you know, how to manage people, yes. um, you know, on a day to day that were my employees because I was just used to typically, um, subcontractors. Exactly. There was no employee. On yeah. The I didn't know anything about, Oh, I can pay somebody, you know, yes. 10 bucks an hour and I gotta, you know, they're, they, they're mine <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to some degree, yeah. right. Yeah. Until, you know, from nine to five yes. to work in this uh, job. So that opened up my eyes considerably. But did you make a profit in the quiz? Quiz I, I, I was making a profit and we, I mean, it was so minimal. It, yes. That wasn't to the, you know, I actually had to work in the store, you know, become the cashier, put an apron on, make these sandwiches. And I realized, I go, this restaurant business isn't for me. Yes. Um, I had exit, I kept it for a couple of years and I actually had a partner, it was one of my school friends. <clears throat> um, so we both did it together. I kept it and I said, okay, well, as long as we can get out of this thing, make a little bit of money, we're, we're happy. We learned a lot. Let's move on with life because this is not a good business to be in, uh, yeah. in at that time because you're it's penny profits. Yes. So, you know, potentially we were doing, I think, uh, $40,000 a month in sales and out of our margin might have been 10%. So yeah. $4,000 a for month that, yeah. on top of splitting it with a partner, it just yes. wasn't feasible. Yeah, because food industry is difficult. I have been in the same industry and I've seen it. Right. Yeah, it's not easy. Especially no. when you're coming from, especially the construction side because there you only supervising it. You're not Correct. doing, you're not yourself everything. Like and the margins are so much more yes, substantial, substantial in there. And you uh, kind of your own boss, even yeah. though the restaurant industry, you are your own boss, but you still work like an employee because you have to do everything and anything there. And you're always worried, you're worried. Or just, you know, because your food walks out the door. with. <laughs> yeah. And also the challenge with the labor also, the people Correct. are coming and going, people are coming and going, the rotation is there, so much hassle in there. And the other thing that I learned was um, that you know, leasing spaces and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was basically working, paying a significant amount of rent to somebody else paying their mortgage off. Yes. And I go, the real value is in the underlying assets, you know, because what happens, you know, historically is that prices on the asset goes more, goes higher than the business itself. 100%. So, so, you know, I was doing it wrong where I need to find businesses that I owned, not just the business, but, but the, the underlying assets. Yeah, the underlying assets. Yeah. I agree you touch it on it because I've said it time and again to a lot of my videos also where I'm approaching the owner operating companies. I said that yeah. if you can buy, buy it rather yeah. than leasing it. Because a lot of people think leasing is easy. Correct. It's less risk. It's actually more risk. Yeah. Because you are tied up for five-year lease or three-year lease, whatever the lease is. Right. And if your business doesn't run, yep. you're screwed. You're Whereas screwed. real estate, at least you will sell it for what you price you purchased. Or you'll it. release yeah. it yes. if your business doesn't run. Exactly. Right? You could do yeah. something in there. Yeah. There's a real estate asset in there. They feel like, okay, no, this is the safest bet to go lease it. Well, and you, and you look at, if, especially if you have a good asset, uh, yeah. likely if you look historically, I mean, being in real estate, you know, we can just look past it, uh, reverse and look at the last 20 years. Yes. What happens in real estate? At the end of the day, it's always like this. Yeah, yes. there's ups and downs, but if yeah. you have carrying ca uh, capacity, you're going to win in the long run. 100%, yes. Right? Yeah, and and, and usually if the asset is really good, yeah. it can 10x or 20x in that period. Yeah. While your business itself may not be able to do that. Yes. Right. But uh, how you could f uh, find out from your own experiences, because you have done a lot of investments too, and you're still doing it, is how you can you know, justify it. This is a good investment because whosoever is buying it in their head is a great investment. Right. So how you filter that out? Okay, this is going to be 10x or not going to be 10x. Well, for me, the way I look at you, like when I'm buying real estate now um, mm -hmm. and I'm strictly in commercial, I don't do residential. Uh, that's too competitive for me, so I haven't touched it. Um, in, in commercial, I'm always looking at real estate that's going to appreciate in the next 20 years with density. Okay. So by that, I mean, any one of the, the properties that I'm acquiring, I'm acquiring close to downtown cores. Nice. So that downtown core, I know, if you look at the OCP, um, is eventually going to spread. Yes. And as it keeps growing out <laughs> further, your density is going to go getting higher. Higher. So all of my properties are usually future high-rise sites. Amazing. So, okay. so when I, if I buy an <clears throat> acre, for example, at you know, $5 million today, in 20 years, 
uh, that, and if I've cash flowed that in for the next 20 years, so I'm not only making money sitting on it, but, uh, and the business is doing well on it, but in 20 years time, that site should be a high rise. Yes. That land went from $5 million to maybe 30, $40 million. Yeah. In 20 years. And that's, that's your return. Rate. And it's, and it's paid off now because yes. I usually, but the tenant my, paid it. yeah, my, my business has run a 20 year amortization on it, paid it all off, made yeah. cash flow, And now I'm sitting on a huge asset. Which is amazing because uh, you have one, but you have the vision and you have the guts also, I could say it. A lot of people doesn't want to go outside the area they're living. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. they feel like, okay, because yeah. just because they are not going to Kamloops every day, nobody's right. going to go to Kamloops or right. Kona yeah, or any yeah, other yeah, city yeah. for that. Well, and you know, even me, myself, I have to admit, I was a little bit concerned about that too, saying, well, why, you know, this is my backyard. I should be doing it. The problem that's happened in British Columbia and the lower mainland specifically is that the it just got, it's gotten so competitive yes. that now if I'm buying land here in Surrey, you're looking at 10, $12 million an acre. Um, it's already there ready for density. Yes. So my spread now is I'm playing with sharks that have tons and tons of money as well. Yes. So why do I want to fight them? Why exactly. do I want to compete with them? And then when my margin isn't substantial anyways, yeah. like if I bought something for $20 million today, it might go up to maybe 30 million in 20 years. Mm. Yeah. Um, whereas if I buy something for 5 million and say, <laughs> look in the island, it has the potential of going to 25, 30 million because, uh, you know, it's, I've bought it less expensive and the density hasn't come there yes. as aggressively as lower mainland has. Yes. So that's why it started branching me out. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. Originally, I mean, it took me a lot. COVID was actually played a big role for me saying, you know what? We're stuck in our house anyways. Everything's online now. Yes. Why, why am I thinking? I'm not thinking outside the box. Why do yeah. I keep thinking lower mainland? You know, the growth is going to happen in these smaller areas further out. Yeah, because there will be somebody, uh, there's going to be next Surrey, there will be next Vancouver. Somewhere yeah. it's going to be, because Surrey and Vancouver Correct. has already been saturated, Burnaby, Richmond, whatever areas you call it. And, and it's yeah. easier to get into those markets because it was less expensive. Exactly. Now, even those, expensive. like some of the properties that we've acquired in those markets have mm -hmm. already forexed in the last couple of years. Amazing. Yeah. So, yes. you know, you buy something for two and it becomes eight. So which uh, city did you buy the last one? No. The last one we just bought was in uh, Colwood. Colwood oh, in, uh, it's, it's in Langford. Oh, Langford. 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 Okay. Yeah, Next to Langford. Langford is yeah. booming a lot. Yeah. It's blowing the prices, up there too. Prices are crazy up there. Yeah. We bought, you know, that one, I, well, that one we bought was uh, about four and a half million. It was two acres there. It's running at around 10. And which year did years. you buy? That's been three years now. Amazing. Yeah, and so what was it? Uh, just a bare land or there was Bare land commercial. But it was yeah. empty, no rental income no, coming nothing, in? Nothing, nothing. Yes. But I mean, I didn't purchase it three years ago. Yeah. I locked it up three years ago. Yeah, that's a so, smart thing because that time the market was slow. So COVID, I you get a longer completion. Correct. Amazing. I was able to complete two years later on that. And one. then you could take the permission from the owner to apply permits in the city and developments and all that too. Yeah, that, this one I bought from Petro Canada. And uh, that the Petro Canada, so maybe a lot of people think like Petro Canada doesn't sell properties or real estate, so they own real estates. Petro Canada, well, Suncor Energy is, is the parent company of Petro Canada. They, okay. they own. All their real estate. And uh, how they, you get into this, finding these properties? Is it connections, realtors? Connections, network. Is it on the MLS online? Or? No, 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 no. It's no, all right? off-market deals. Off-market deals. Yeah, yeah. So it's all networking, meeting with people, meeting with the right people. You know, it, I, I realized a long time ago that uh, your network is your real net worth. Yes. Um, and especially when you surround yourself with successful people that are doing well, um, they're going to uplift you as well. Um, so, you know, yeah. uh, through my friends and connections, I got these other connections. And then I said, look, I'm looking for real estate anywhere in British Columbia. Please just keep me on your list. Amazing. And, you know, going out with them, having a couple of dinners, creating that, you know, that personal connection. Hey, yeah. They'll just call you and say, hey, I got this coming up. I don't know if you want it. I go, yes, I want it. So um, put it this, Raj, you have a, such a great experience on it. The net, And I 100% agree what you said. It is your network is your net worth. Yeah. I'm a new guy who... I don't know anybody, how I started, how I can make those net connections with the people, like what to start with it, put it this you're way. You're starting later. right now, unplugged. Yeah. So okay. uh, anybody and everybody you're interviewing yes. is a network, is a, that's a connection. Yes. Um, but for, for a normal person who's not Jazz Abrai, who's not Raj Admi, he's starting it off the blocks. He's a new guy. He got excited, pumped up. Okay, Raj did this. I wanted to be next Raj. It, how he can be, like what Well, challenge. I mean, again, uh, just... That new guy could start mm -hmm. a podcast. Right? Yes, uh, that's one avenue. But it's a it's a matter of depending on what industry you want to be in. If you want to be in the restaurant industry, you surround yourself with all the best restaurateurs. Yes, and the way you you just pick up the phone. People that are successful are open to conversations. Yeah, I love this what you said because I've, time and again I've told my realtors in the team also. Yeah, guys, you know this phone. 
you have to pick it up and talk yes. to the people yeah. nobody's yeah. going to knock on your door and say can you sell my house no well no i mean you coming from your industry you know that all day long 99% of the people aren't won't be successful because they just won't pick up the phone exactly the 1% yes. will pick up the phone all day long and they're yeah. going to land one deal exactly yeah. that's what it is you have to put yeah. the work into it exactly. there's no shortcuts in there and you can't you have to have confidence yeah you have to you, you don't want to be in a situation where you're like oh my god i'm scared to call raj athmi mm -hmm. why Right? Yeah. Or like, am I scared to call Bill Gates? No, I'm not scared, but I can't yeah. find his number. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, or, or I put it this way. I will call Sorry. Raj Admi. Worst case, he will say to me, fuck off. Okay, exactly. fuck off. Okay, done. And at I'll, least, I, at least know, I'll do it. I, Give I, a try. You never know. I've done, I still do that to yes. guys. Like some of my mentors are billionaires. And I, and I, you know, I'll look at somebody and I'll, I'll, and I'll, you know, I'll see them on a social media platform or I'll see them somewhere like, I want to get to know that guy. And this guy has a couple million followers or whatever he may be. And I'm like, well, probably someone's probably just never picked up the phone and called this guy. Yes. You know, and, and, and if you don't have that fear, eventually you're going to connect with somebody. Right. Right. It's the fact that if you just don't try or you've already given, you've already given yourself a mental block yes. by saying, I can't. So I can't Raj, this that. mindset was from the day one when you get being 18 or 16 years old when you started your business skills or it was just by the taste I've of the success. You go in more confidence. I think my confidence has been built because I've seen my dad do it. Okay. Right? So it comes from upbringings, right? right. Um, and I've, dad always he put me into a lot of fighting when I was young. Like uh -huh. I used to box. I used to go into, you know, you know, Taekwondo. He used to put me into all the physical activities. And that actually built a lot of confidence as well. Confidence. In right? It. it just, I mean, having, in hindsight, I used to go box and I remember where I was because I had a Cuban trainer who used to hit me in the head all the time <laughs> to become tough. So mom finally said, he goes, he, my son doesn't know where his house is because he keeps getting hit. So <laughs> I go, I shouldn't have done that maybe, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but generally it built my confidence. And, confidence and in there. Confidence in anything is what is, <clears throat> is what makes the difference. Yes. The confidence right. is going to take you, it's going to take you to the different level. Well, it's got level, you where yes. you are. Yeah. Right? I'm sure. It, it's always going to be confidence. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, exactly what you said it yeah. to be like, First thing in my head was it always being like, I'm not competing with anybody else. I'm not trying to prove anybody. I'm trying to prove myself that I, yes, I started as a server, but I didn't come to Canada just Correct. for being a server. It's for a time being. Yes. And I have to remind myself. It is very, you have to do it. Right? Well, and, and I'm sure your server self back in those days didn't know how far you were going to achieve, but you just... Day yes. by day, you kept exactly. pushing forward. Yeah. If you ask right. me like 15 years ago, did yeah. I ever think about becoming a realtor and being successful? No. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. 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 I okay. was having a dream. Like I was having a vicious in the sense that I wanted to be successful one day. That's right. How? I don't know. Yes. I didn't have the just, answer at that time. Yeah. How? And sometimes we don't have the answer. Yes. It and just, you don't need to find it. No. Just go with the flow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, it, it, when you think there's this huge mountain to climb, you quit already. Yes. But... When you're just taking etching away at that mountain day yeah. by day by day by day, you just one day you look back and you're like, holy crap, yeah. how do I get one, up here? One step at a time, <laughs> exactly. one step at a time. Yeah. So now, Raj, coming back to your puzzle story where you started the business, you were doing the improvements, the construction business. Yeah. Then where did it take you eventually to how so far then, did you uh, go from I mean, there? We, I had that old company, uh, yes. which was called Wash World. Right. Um, and uh, the reason I got into Wash World uh, which was those self-serve bays and those automatic uh, car washes that go around the car like gas stations uh, have, uh, was because I ended up doing a building one for somebody. Um, and I just started realizing and learning the business of these. So you were building a car wash for someone? Somebody. So yeah, your business of the construction also gone to that level Correct. from the improvements because... Uh, I became a general a GC, a general contractor oh, for... Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And how, uh, how long it, did it take you to be a general contractor and building car Probably wash Probably five, six years. Okay. Uh, from more from the, from the Quiznos uh, growth. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there on in, we just realized... I, I, sorry, I just realized that... You know, these car washes actually are great because, you know, I was always trying to find ways to find prime property yeah. and sit on it to cash flow it. You know, I looked at strip malls. I looked at restaurants, like the McDonald's idea yeah. where, oh, McDonald's, you know, just owns this property and they make a ton of money on top of their asset. Yes. Um, so I looked at all those and this this car wash thing came along and it was just putting, you know, uh, back then it was just quarters in this, this wand wash bay that you scrub. Yeah. And... 
I, I was like, when I was going to build it for the, the you know, the, the gentleman, I was, I started laughing. I'm like, dude, how is these quarters going to pay for a couple million dollars? It yeah. doesn't make sense to me. Right. So I started researching it more and more and more. And I go, holy crap. I go, this thing can generate a lot of quarters. Right? Yes. <laughs> and, and from though, though, from there on in, I started looking at, it, I go, maybe I should just build these because there's not, nobody doing it to a scale. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, fast Then you open up your own company. So I opened up my own company and the first one I built was on, in Surrey on the corner of 72nd Avenue and 132. Okay. Is it still uh, there? It's still there. Is, is the, the, uh, Watch World. Watch World. Okay. Yeah. Watch World. Watch World. Uh, okay. And then from there, obviously I expanded into other so things. So did you buy the land at that Bought time? Bought the land, built the facility, bought the equipment and then started cash flowing it. Okay. How much uh, did you buy that then? Well, Approximately uh, idea. The was like. I think it was 750, 750. On King George and Laker? Like, uh, which no, year no, are we talking 72nd about? 72nd and 132. Which year, which uh, year are we oh talking shit, about? shit, now you're really like giving my memory. Yeah. <laughs> it was probably over 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Yeah. But still, uh, like for yeah. $700,000 an acre, Yeah, yeah, yeah 20 yeah. years ago, somebody would have purchased it. And, and now today, that, that value will be what? Oh, 10, 12, 12 million. 12 million. Yeah. So yeah, I'm done yeah, for yeah. my life, then exactly. I will do it. That's well, you could have retired off that one yeah, property. Exactly. Uh, so. Yeah, so so then, I mean, I just, for me, was, everything was about cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. You need cash flow to justify more real estate. Yes. And to keep growing. So I, when I did, built that one, then I started building more. Uh, I built them in Richmond. I built it in, uh, built another one in on 104th. I built it in Langley. I built it in Chilliwack. I built it in Abbotsford. I built it in uh, in Maple Ridge. And how many years did it take you to build that all these locations? That took me about 15 years. 15 years yeah, to build to all build this all empire. The, all this, how many uh, locations we would had that thing? We had uh, eight of the car washes, and then we also had other businesses. Then we had oil change facilities mm -hmm. like. They were, they were called Lubro, but they're called, uh, I mean, now they're Jiffy Lube or Mr. Yes, Lube. Yeah, Mr. Same Lube. idea. Okay. And uh, those ones, we were, I had leased one to somebody. So I put it on my property, leased it, and then the franchisee actually was selling it. Um, so I just ended up buying it, operating it, saw, saw that there's actually good money in that as well. Mm -hmm. Then I took over that franchise, changed the name. Made my own franchise called Lube World, yeah, and expand started expanding those around the city, and made six of those on our car wash properties. And um, when you were doing all this, you you have siblings? Yes, one okay. younger one. Uh, one so younger they were helping one. you in your business too? No, or? I was no. By so you were. But, so was there ever ever been a challenge like you wearing multiple hats or running multiple businesses, which are yeah. high generating incomes? So you have to be on top of everything to make sure the counting is done pro. Yeah. So was there a challenges or well, how challenge you manage it? The challenge was in 2008 when I got wiped out. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, the uh, prior the, the recession came in. Yeah, recession okay. came in. No, and I was doing. I was, I got involved in too many things, and I started losing control of the operations because. Um, I just didn't understand a lot of the business I was in. I was into car dealerships then. Um, the so oil changes itself, I wasn't. I didn't really understand operating them. I was in massive expansion when at the peak of construction, peak of land costs. So I'd bought mm -hmm. too much capital. Um, interest rates had climbed, and I couldn't make my payments, my monthly payments. So uh, is it safe to say at that time that you were trying to do anything and everything which is coming your way yes. without thinking about it? What would be the outcome? Or I, well, you know, a valuable lesson back then was uh, I thought I. <laughs> could do everything and anything um, on my own. Mm. And, uh, and I spread my brain too thin. Um, you know, learned uh, years after that, just focus what you're good at. Right. right. And, yes. and monopolize on that rather than trying to get everything else going until your, your foundation is strong enough. Meaning mm. like if I was, look at Jim Patterson, I'm sure Jim Patterson doesn't uh, uh, work at a cashier at Save on Foods, no, but yes. he owns it. Right? Yes. But yeah. he, it took him time to build up the build right that, systems yes. and the teams around him. My team at the time wasn't strong enough for the growth that I had in, in, envisioned. So and unfortunately it, it, it so when came 2008 came in, things slowed down. Yeah. What happened exactly? Like, well, basically, in a nutshell, uh, the bank called my loan, uh -huh. and they said, "Raj, give up, give the money." And it was, you know, close to twenty-five million dollars at the time. Oh, and uh, I said, "I don't have the money to give you, and nor is any other bank lending." Similar to this climate, banks yeah. are really, really tough. Right. So it's really hard to get mortgages, especially when you're not doing that well. Yes. So they said, "Either you pay us out, or we're going to sell your company." And I said. Well, you can't, it's my company, you can't sell it. And they said, no, no, Mr. Admi, it's actually our company because we have the first mortgage on it. So that was a little bit of a shock for me, for sure. Okay. <laughs> so you were in a debt of 25 million? Yeah. And so, yeah. what was going through your head that time? I thought actually I was going to get out of it somehow. I thought that, okay, well, how the hell is this bank going to take this company? They don't know how to run it. They don't know how to manage it. Yeah. Uh, they don't know anything about it. I, I own it uh, and I'm in charge of it. 
Um, and they taught me pretty quickly that, no, yes. you don't own it. Um, you know, and they, they simply just basically, you know. Liquidated the assets. Well, they told me, you're done. Yeah. Get out. And they locked me out of my own company. And they took my management, my senior management, and they said, now we'll pay you directly. You guys run it. Raj is out of the question. And, uh, you know. So what, bank what, took a charge of it. Yeah. And running your company. Correct. So it was one company who was having all those multiple businesses. It was one, one group that owned yes, everything. Uh, owned so they everything, took the main group. Correct. The army group or yeah. the name yeah. at that yeah. time, yeah. whatever yeah. the name was. They so took, they took, they it took it the top and then they took everything, all the underlying assets and the businesses underneath it. So the bank just simply put in a monitor. So hmm. they hired a company and said, hey, you're going to pay this company, uh, you know, uh, this monitor a few hundred thousand dollars a month or whatever it is. And you're going to run this company now and you're going to find us the best way to liquidate this company, the company. and move on or move to save our, our $25 million. So you were pretty much oh, in saying that was done at that time. So what was going through your head? Was, do you have that, assets other than the company? It was it? No. So it wiped me out. put me in bankruptcy. Uh, oh. So I, I I had to go through personal bankruptcy and business bankruptcy at, at the time, and uh, start all over again. Um, so um, that part of my life was definitely uh, a wake up and and, and extremely difficult because um, I I wasn't aware of um, I wasn't aware if I was going to get back up. Number one, mm -hmm. uh, obviously you know during those times a lot of things go through your brain, suicidal yes. thoughts, so many different things. Uh, and fortunately. Um, I just had, you know, uh, strong parents that said yeah. that, don't worry, um, you know, you're going to be okay. As long as we're around, you're going to have at least a place to live. Yeah. And and that's where I was at. But Raj, it's easy to say than done. And I wanted to understand your mindset at that time, was it? Because when there's a downfall, you have that, you know, aura around you. Yeah. When you're successful, everybody's wanted you to meet yes. and everything. The fame goes. Of course. The, 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 everything goes. And then yeah. you wanted actually not to meet nobody at that time you wanted to lock up yourself you in the room close up for two years i locked yeah. myself up for two and what was me. going through your head that time like what what you were thinking of you you're going to start a job or what are you going to do it because i, I didn't you know need to steal I, the money at that to... time i started drinking heavy i started you know <laughs> people were losing. treating you the same as they were treating when no, you were you lo i lost ni probably 90 percent of the people around me the people that mm -hmm. were there for the the ride they all yeah. disappeared um i lost my confidence yeah. i lost uh um, you know, I just thought I lost, I lost everything in myself. I thought I was yes. just finished. And, uh, you know, there's, there's just one, there's one turning point in my life, um, which I've, you know, shared a few times now. And that was when I was in McDonald's and, um, my dad had me on like a little salary just says, look, he was giving me about, I think it was 1200 bucks a month mm -hmm. just to live, to eat. And, um, um, you know, every day I'd go get groceries or do whatever I was living in, you know, under my dad's roof. Um, and one day, even that $1,200, I didn't have, uh, I guess I had spent it or something. I went to McDonald's to get a coffee and the coffee declined. And I said, and then that point, I mean, I had tears down my eyes after I, and I, I, I was embarrassed at the, at the till. And I just went and I turned around, I uh, parked, uh, parked there and I sat there for a few hours and, and just started thinking about life and said, either today I'm going to end my life or I'm going to get back up. And fortunately, I chose to get back up. No, amazing, brother. Yeah. That's amazing that you get back up. But how did you get back up and how you started? Okay, a lot of people wanted to be there. Like, yes, they have seen the downfall and they wanted to go back, right? Bounce back. How difficult was it or what you did it in your daily routine to go the back? The first thing that I changed in my life was to strengthen myself. Um, I was weak. Uh, mm -hmm. I was meant, uh, weak mentally. I was weak physically. You know, I started r listening to reading books. I started uh, listening to uh, people on YouTube, you know, motivators and stuff like that, just to get my mindset back to the right phase. Because I knew it didn't matter what I was going to get into. If I didn't build myself up back and my strength back up and my confidence back up, there's nothing uh, that will help me in, my, in this life. No one yes. or no one can use, hand me money and make it happen. Right. So I started first physically getting stronger. Going to the okay. gym every day, um, you know, working out, started eating very clean, getting my head clear, started getting into meditation, um, started putting all those, all those positive things into my life just to become a stronger human being. Because right. once I knew if, if I became, felt good, nothing else was going to stand in my way. Yes. So that took me five, six months just to get to that level, that mindset. Yeah. And then I started looking at 
okay, now I'm ready to attack the world. It's, I'm still Raj Admi. He goes, I can get this thing back. I go, I just need to figure out my direction, what's going to, what am I good at? I'm good at real estate. I'm good at flipping properties. I'm good at structuring deals. I have networks. I have people. I know people. I just need to get those sources. So, you know, simple thing was me just tying up property and flipping it with no money back yeah. in those days. So, you know, if you buy, you know, buy uh, a corner house and you know it can get some either density out of it or you, you know um, there's, you know, there's value in six months or something like that, trying to structure contracts yeah. um, along the way that I could actually flip them in the future. Right. Um, so that's kind of how I started going, get, getting my confidence. Getting into from. it. And would it be fair to say that at that time when you restarted it and you were doing this, flipping this, probably going into your head is, you have nothing to lose now. If something goes sideways still, you will be not able, like if you, let's say you tie up a yeah. property, what if you can't flip it? Right. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. What There's, if you I can't? have nothing. Yeah, I'm you have bankrupt, nothing to lose. I can't get yeah. mortgages. I can't get nothing. Nothing to so, lose. So, right. so there's, there, you're right. I, you, you had put me back in a wall so far that the only way I could go now was forward. Forward, yes. Right? Because and so I was going to, I was relentless. I was going to do whatever. I was going to work a lot of hours. Uh, you know, I worked 16, 17, 18 hours a day. Yeah. Just trying to figure out ways to make, make money, right? Make and never money. in this whole journey, you'd never come across a mind where you could take a shortcut and do something which is not right and get gain a quick money? I mean, there's always those things in the in your in your mind when you think that, okay, you know what? I could get into drugs. I could get yeah. into this. I could get into, you Sell know. Sell it and then make quick money out of it. Quick money. But that, I was raised in an environment where a lot of my friends were in that game and, you know, 90% of them didn't make it. And that, it was another big reason why I wouldn't even go in that industry, in that field, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. I go, dude, that's, there's no value. And what I realized, the successful, the real successful people were making more money legitimately anyways. Yeah. You just, have to, you just have to think with your brain. It's not hard to make money if you know, like a piece of paper is more like, it's better than a drug deal. Yes. Right? If you can structure the deal on that paper to make a flip. Yeah. So, you know, I looked at those types of asp you know, aspects in life. So I was just fortunate to be raised in East Vancouver where I seen a lot of downf uh, downfall in those, those yes. easy ways. Yeah. <laughs> no, I understand it. because Why I'm saying this is because what happens is when the time is tough, you wanted to, one is yes, you wanted to get up again. Yeah. I wanted to go out and do work to prove not only to yourself because you think, okay, people who l let down, like, do you have hopes from somebody? You wanted right. to prove a point to them too. Okay, Definitely. I'm not a failure. I, it was just one of the things. Yeah. And in that process, sometimes you Make off the track. Yeah. You yeah, go yeah, quick yeah. to prove the point. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that happens but or it has it has come out. No, to you. there's there's never. But there's uh, even on that side, there's no quick. Any, anybody yes. that says it's going to be quick is never quick. Quick. Yeah. Right. And anybody that's involved in that kind of stuff is never sleeping at night. Yeah. Right? So no, I I don't I, you good. know I I knew that the. As long as you work hard, you're going to accomplish whatever you want. Yeah. And and that was when I was younger, before I lost everything, my mindset was like that as well. And that's yes. how I excelled so yeah. fast. Because it helped you, because you did it on your own previously. Correct. So you, there was no reason why you can't do it again. Exactly. Right. And, you know, having people that are around you, like a good family that says, don't worry, yeah. we're still here around you. Having good the, the handful of friends that I did have, they would all say, go, dude, you're smart. Yeah. You're going to you make it, it back up. Yeah. We, it's just a matter of time. And they almost made, they believed more in me than I believed in myself. No, amazing. And I'm just like, well, am I missing something? Right? Yes. <laughs> I go, how come you guys think that I'm going to make it up? They go, you just are. Like one yeah. of my best friends, he was always say, he goes, well, you know, don't worry about it. He goes, if you need some money or whatever to help out here and there, I'm here for you. But you're going to make it anyways. It's just a matter no. of time. Yeah. Right? He goes, just, just get out there. And he goes, go through your struggles. If you want to go through your struggles, do your thing. But eventually you're going to shake it off because you're still young. You know, I was very fortunate, and today I think that's my biggest blessing, is that loss, because mm -hmm. as you get older, it's harder to bounce back up. Exactly, yeah. So if I hadn't had that loss back in 2008, maybe I would have had it now in this market, because this yes. market's tough, really tough, tough as well. Yeah. I was just fortunate enough not to leverage myself like I did back then, that I could sustain these ups and downs. Yeah. But... If I did, I probably would have been extremely leveraged right now because I'd want to become a billionaire by now. Yes. And I would have lost that billion. Yeah. All right. No. So, and now it would be much harder to get back up. Yeah, because of the age is there too. Exactly. This is one common factor actually off the cameras also, Raj, I told you is, and why I, I related to this is, and I was asking these questions is, not many people know it. I was, I came from a very wealthy family back in India. Okay. My dad was an industrialist. Okay. And he was selling cycle parts to Hero Cycles. Hero Cycle is a very renowned company. It's huge, yeah. So he was there. 
unfortunately things goes went sideways with his health and eventually i lost him he and then everything collapsed oh, so he like, lost it all yeah he lost it and no uh, like yeah. he passed away in a road accident then the okay. business was already going down okay. i was like 14 15 at right. that time by that age i was 18 right. i lost him in an accident right so everything collapsed right we used to have like cars drivers servants in india so you, you know saw, how they you saw everything. that high high everything yeah. like yeah. Uh, they used to call the servants used to call me baba yeah. baba means like a yeah. kid yeah. like a baba they used to call me yeah. uh, my nickname is monu they used to call me monu baba, monu baba. Uh, yeah monu baba always everybody's like i'm the apple of the eye could be saying that right. everybody everybody likes me right and all of a sudden it's all gone. like all gone Wow. and the people changed their colors yeah because my mom was the single lady being there the what she did it right. she low down cut down on the all the expenses right income was gone right my dad was lending money in india at that time it was private lending just like here right but only thing is was that there was no charge on the titles so we didn't even know who he has lent the money oh wow and it was a substantial money at that time he has landed and, and we didn't know anybody and not even a single person back. came back to us saying hey that's we owe sad. the money that's sad so we have to sell our house right. go back to in one room where there was we used to have an air conditioning in our houses so all i still remember there was a, across to the bed right. there was an air conditioning on the floor because we didn't have the money right. to put it on and right. pay the electricity wow. so we were one in a one bedroom where from a mansion it was one bedroom and none of nobody helped nobody came up but wow. that taught me a lesson yeah. as you said it like okay yeah. young age it how taught me a lesson okay and my mom was always saying it you yeah. will overcome with this and why, you know why i was asking you this like have you ever thought about those things because yeah. at when i was 18 19 year olds i thought okay there could be a shortcut yeah. to prove the point right to my yeah. relatives to my friends whosoever doubting me or i had that you know the frustration right. Yeah, anger towards anger, them anger, towards anger them. there that okay i wanted to prove myself and i was yeah. trying too hard that time yeah yeah and yeah, i yeah. remember i came home and i cried to my mom because right. she was saying that you she used to always tell me that okay you will overcome with this right. your dad this 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 the he is being so successful he was a self made guy too he said yeah. and one day i was so frustrated i came back i said this is all lie this yeah. is bullshit yeah people yeah. out there they don't, don't yeah. treat you with the respect yeah a mom you just whatever you telling me just to make me feel good feel good yeah okay yeah, this is yeah, not yeah. true yeah and i remember she was in the tears i was in the tears we try crying yeah. but those that time period my sister my mom my myself yeah. we bonded so tight together right, right. which we were not there right. i would say like when we were in a big house because we were 24/7 in one room of sharing course. the experiences yeah. and that taught me okay whenever they going to be next time i will be having the money I have to be grounded myself correct and not to get overwhelmed with the things because money can come and go oh it's a fame I, I absolutely it can come agree. and go but yeah. you always know the true colors of the people when you don't have anybody anything with you and they're still with you like oh, those I are can't the even people. imagine like cuz you're young then that's why that's much more painful than my story in in, in my mom was very help uh, yeah. like she was the one who who actually because of her i i'm here i where i am yeah. unfortunately yeah. i lost her also in 2012 she oh, couldn't shit. see my rise oh man 2012 yeah. she came to canada she didn't like the canada she said okay obviously she lived the whole life in india yeah. and the language barrier and all that she said no i want to go back to india yeah and at the airport i still remember she said it i don't have any concern about you now yeah I've Either seen way. you. Yeah. At that time I was doing job. Yeah. Still and she said that I'm not having any concern about it now about you. I know you will be successful. And unfortunately so literally 2 weeks after yeah. she passed away. Oh she was God. a diabetic and she her sugar levels went down and yeah. all of a sudden she in passed India. away in India. Oh my God. And yes and yeah. it shook me but it taught me too like I was very close to my mom. Right. When she passed away I went to India. Yeah. Did yeah. all all That's the yeah, ceremony nice. ceremony everything and, and coming back it realized me one thing is world never stops yes i was so close to my mom and whenever you know sometimes a person you're very close to you think of back of mind what if something happens to her right. or him yeah yeah, yeah and yeah, then yeah. you say brush off your mind right away no no i'm not going to even right. think about it yeah but it, when it actually happened i realized it that at that time i just opened up my restaurant so yes. i have to come back and open up my restaurant again because i have to still pay the rents of course right everything has to go on and that uh, shook yeah. me and still i still sometimes go back into that zone feel like how practical we are like yeah. my mom passed away yeah. it only took me one week to go back to to get to, and move on move on yeah, yeah, like yeah, who yeah, else yeah, you can think it. about losing and then you have to move on no like, but you were strong enough to do that and i mean you got to say i mean at the end of the day we don't 
don't really know what happens after life, but I always yes. feel presence. As right? always, yes, and, and, as and always. I'm sure your mom was there, presence, and she's still watching or whatever it is. Or at least if you feel that way as a human, it feels good and gives you confidence. You want to keep moving forward. Bro, I feel like yeah. I said, I, I, hundred, I have a very strong belief about it. This is her blessings because she passed away in 2013. Right. And since 2014, I have never looked back. I just like, kept going. Some, yeah. it, it, something has put it in like it has all... I. My daughter yeah. born. Yes. Never looked back after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It That's was awesome. my mom passed away. Yeah. The my wife yeah. got pregnant. Right. It was not planned. Oh wow. Yeah. And she got <laughs> pregnant, and then yeah. we had a second baby because my son was only eight months old when my wife again well, got pregnant. pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had a daughter. Yeah. So everything feel like okay. This was just was maybe there's something meant to be. There's some power up there. Maybe That's when the day when I die, I will yeah. find out the reality. But I have a strong belief that my daughter Same. is just. You know, you you nailed it. It's energy. Yes. Energy transfers, and we all have energy in whatever it is, you dil or whatever yeah. you call it, uh, right? Minu lada uh, wapas uh, yeah, 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 she's yeah, there. Yeah, she's yeah, there yeah, because yeah. I've never looked back after that. And it is, and and you can't explain it. But no, you're, but you're right. Yeah, right? exactly. If somebody asks me what has worked in your favor, just what yeah. you have done extraordinary yeah. to reach where you are. Honestly, nothing. Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> like, there's no secret sauce. Yeah, if you yeah. tell me, okay, one thing I can tell somebody, I have done it. Yeah. Nothing. No. I don't yeah, know yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what okay. worked for well, me. Well, it's not one thing. It's everything. <laughs> yes, it has to be. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I have, being you, being successful, Raj, yeah. I look up to all those yeah. people. I watch your videos also. Not yeah. every, I know, I we don't talk quite often, but right. I look up to the people. Yeah. I respect it to the people who are self-made and you yeah. are. And not for the sake of you sitting just across to me and saying yeah. that, brother. No. I really it. And I see what I do is, I am I will say this way. I'm not a smart guy around it's, the block. Yeah. I'm a copycat. I just copy whatever the top successful people are doing. It just copy them. They wake up early in the morning. Correct. I yeah. will wake up early in the morning. They're yeah. disciplined. I will be disciplined. Yeah. They yeah. are motivated themselves. They don't need somebody out to motivate right. them. They have yeah. a consistency. Yeah. They're going to do something. They yeah. will give 110%. And I'm thinking, okay, I will do the same thing. And we're, that is working. No, bro, we're all copycats that matter. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't have to look outside. If you see someone successful, all you do is just follow. Yes. Right? So, you know, it, you, that, the fact that you just stress those items is such a big difference in someone's life to become successful or not. Yeah. So when someone tells me, well, what's, you know, hey, Raj, can you help me become successful? I go, what's your daily uh, routine? Well, you know, on Saturdays I go out, so I get up around 11 o'clock and, you know, have breakfast and then I start, okay, well... You, I can't yeah. help you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Yeah, this low exactly. You got, you got, you, you know, you have no structure. Yeah, right? I, have and no I go structure. first. You know, work on yourself, and once you've worked on yourself, now let's talk about which direction you want yeah. to go. Right, and it's difficult. You can relate to it because you get up early in the morning. You go to the gyms. It yeah. changes your mindset completely. Absolutely. Everything. The best ideas comes in your is the morning. Morning. Time. Yeah. No yeah. distractions. When you're fresh. Oh, yeah. Uh, right, you know, no uh, distractions, nothing. I, you know, my wife knows my my favorite time of the day is from three a.m. to six a.m. Oh, you wake up at three? Three a.m. Yeah, Amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling my wife to. I'm gonna start waking. I wake up at five. Yeah. I, t- I started. I used to wake up at six thirty. Yeah. So last two years, I've started waking up at five, and now I to- I was telling her the other day that I'm gonna start waking up at four. Yeah. So she said to me as a joke. Yeah. She said to me. Just the best thing is you don't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> what do you wanted to do? Like you waking up now at four o'clock? So yeah. because back of my sheep was like, okay, he's gonna bother me yeah. also to wake up at the, around like so this. Some, I'm some the opposite. Right. So the reason why I kept going earlier and earlier because my wife starts getting up with me now. At, well, she was getting up at oh, four or five. Yeah, four she was, no, she was getting up at five. Okay. With with me, so I'm like, I don't have no space now. I need my morning, <laughs> so I have to get up at three. So I got two more hours. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do in the morning? If you three a.m. I start I start my my rituals. So my okay. day starts off with usually uh, get out of bed, uh, brush my teeth, jump in a cold shower. Okay. To shock my body, go downstairs. Doesn't matter what temperature uh, is there. Uh, no, I just put it right on cold, just like ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like a coffee. <laughs> Um, and then you're buzzed, right? Then I'm buzzed from that. Uh, then I'll go downstairs. Sorry, Raj, I want to touch base on that one. Too. So does that help cold shower? Oh my God. It's a game changer. Is it's it? Changer. Like what you get it out of this? Like well, just the body, you charge up? Just imagine you starting your day in a cold shower and the fact that you've told your mind that I can take a cold shower. Yes. From the start of the Overcome day. Overcome the fear forget of about, that Forget about the, the therapeutic shower. benefits of, of what it can do to your body. Because mm-hmm. it's obviously shocking your cells. So it's uh, reviving, reviving. They're reviving right away. Yes. Yeah. But more importantly, your mental strength in the morning by just doing that completely changes your day. Now yeah. your mind is like, 
holy, this guy's in control. Yes. I'm not messing with this guy today. <laughs> right? He just took a cold shower. Yeah. I'm not going to screw with him. Right? Right. Okay. So, so just that alone is powerful. Okay, I'll try. Right? I'll, start, I'll try it. Start small. Yes. Right? And here's a little secret. When you like... When, when I first started doing it, you know, a couple of years ago, I was like, there's no way I'm going to take a cold shower in the morning. You're already cold. I actually yes. want to warm and you know, relax a bit, meditate in there, do whatever you got to do. So what I would do is I'd start warm and then go colder, colder, yeah. colder, colder, colder. And okay. then you, you, you start, you know, every day you start saying, I got to do it longer. I got to do it longer. And then you're like, why am I even starting warm? My mind telling me I should start warm, but it's, it's trying to control me. Forget it. I'm going in there cold. So you go in there cold. No, and then it, you start. Yeah, you the start. mindset is there. It's, it's all about the mindset. Because 100%. It's, uh, what you're starting is these small things makes a huge difference in your lifestyle. Everything. In your business. So, you everything. know, when he goes back to what gained your success. And you, like we said, it's not one thing. It's yeah. everything. Yeah. Now, just introducing little things like that into the beginning of my day, every mm. day, your day is naturally going to get better and better. Now, there's days I don't do it. Yeah. And there's days I don't do my morning rituals. I don't work out. I don't do, like another thing that we started a few years ago, is we drink um, bone broth in the morning. Oh, okay. So bone broth is good for your gut. It's good for healing. It's good for everything. So I'll sip on that in the morning during, uh, after my cold shower, yeah. you know, getting prepped for the gym. Yes. Right. And, and just so, you know, my gut's healing. So I, you take a shower before you're going to the gym and yeah, then okay. just to wake up. Okay. Just to shock my, shock, shock myself. That's my, that's my treat in the morning to shock myself. I'll try it. Yeah, I'll try yeah, it from yeah. tomorrow. And then, and then a ma it's like having a coffee. Okay. Just, 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 you'll be shocked. You're like, starts, you're supposed to go for three minutes. Yes. Minimum. Start with three seconds. Okay. Right. And it's, you'll, slowly, you'll be, slowly. yeah, slowly, slowly. Yeah. So it's not shock. I mean, if, unless your mind's strong and you can do it because <laughs> you're not going to die. Yeah. I promise oh, I, okay. you, you're not going to die. <laughs> then I will push myself. Yeah, I'll try to do it yeah. at least two minutes, two minutes to start then. with. I'm actually now, I bought one of these big cold tubs. Yes. And which has a refrigeration system that's, that's, that's icing it basically. It keeps it at a certain temperature. Uh, the problem is I put it outside. So I'm still trying to battle my, my, my mind to get out of the bed and go outside and do it. Or I'm like, oh, it's too far. I'm just going to do it in so, the shower. So, in India, you can't get out of the bed. Nothing is going to happen. Nothing. But you can't get out of the bed. No, you can't get out of the so it's all a mindset, right? Yeah, we'll go. We'll 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 go for walks in the morning, right? In the beach. Yeah, uh, that's one of my 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 meditations in the morning. You do uh, meditation? Uh, oh yeah, we meditate at least minimum twenty minutes a day. And it helps. Uh, it helps. It helps calm the mind, right? Yeah. It helps brain because your brain's going, you know, a million a million uh, times so a minute. So what what is the meditation is for? Like uh, in, in layman Stop. language, is it just you have to calm your brain? To, Calming your brain, like you listen to the spiritual. No, you so you can do. It. There's so many different ways of meditation. You can do it. I actually per personally like guided meditation, mm -hmm. and I just listen to Joe Dispenza, Doctor Joe Dispenza, um, and he'll do a 20 minute. You can Google him yeah. and just try a 20 minute uh, uh, meditation with him. Okay. So all you're trying to do is strengthen your brain to control it where it wants to do. Because as you know, our, there's so many things yes, we're thinking bro, about. It is all over the place. Yeah. Put it this yeah, way. Yeah, like yeah. my brain is all over the place. I sometimes lost myself. Like I'm yeah. talking to Something. Manuel, for example. I will open up a door and he can, he's nodding his head there. <laughs> like I open up my door and I say, hey, Manuel. He say, yes. Oh, fuck. I forgot what I yeah, was exactly. So imagine now if you could control that. You can control where your brain is going, which direction you're going. Because my problem was when I'd, uh, when I'd zone into a project, that project, I'd start losing it because I'd so many things, distractions yeah, were going distractions to my brain. Are there. But when I, when, I, when I introduced meditation to myself, which was years ago, now when I'm looking at something, I zone completely in because I re uh, remind myself continuously that calm your brain. Focus on the task at hand. Don't let the noise bother me. And you'll come up with these such creative ideas that you never thought you could. And you're yeah. like, oh my God, I didn't think of it from this angle. It's because you're zoned in. Yeah. Right? No, so, so that's why it's been, it's a, been huge value to me. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. And how long did it take you to come to the point where you could realize this is working for me, the meditation? Well, when I lost everything, that's yeah. when I started introducing those things into my life. Okay. Um, I, you know, and again, just like you, copycat. Yeah. I just started following the most successful people and what their rituals are. And a, a common theme with a lot of them was meditation. So I'm like, what the hell is this meditation? This yogi guy standing yeah. there doing this kind of crap. I go, well, this guy's a loser, yeah. right? I go, who meditates? I go, right? <laughs> and that was our Raj, perception. My wife does it and yeah. she says me the same thing and I yeah. tell her the same. 
Who yeah. does a meditation? <laughs> Fuck is it? I don't want to do a meditation. And it's my hard. work is my meditation yeah. for me. I told her I will joke around with her. I said that my work is my meditation. I don't need a meditation for that. I'm always your focused. work will get better and easier with meditation. Okay, that's that's yes. the way you gotta look at it. It's adding tools to your life that strengthen yourself. It goes back to you. You, why do you go to the gym? Right yeah. to feel good about yourself, well, your yes. to be healthy, to feel you know strong, confident. Why do people meditate? It's that it's your now you're exercising your brain. Yeah. So that trying to control your brain is more harder than going to the gym. So before you going to the gym, you do the meditation, or after coming before before. So yeah. you wake up in the morning, you take the shower first thing. Yeah. Obviously with the uh, before that yeah. brush, and then you do the meditation. Then uh, then then, then I'll like I'll start my stuff in the kitchen where I'll. Turn my, my hot water on for the broth. I'll take uh, my first, the first thing that goes in my body is lemon water. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll drink a, a big glass of lemon water to start my, my inner digestive system to get going. And then uh, from there, I'll, I'll take some of my, vi my vitamins. Usually I'll have a little bit of food with it because I'm taking methylated vitamins right now. Okay. Uh, methylated vitamins basically break down better in your body and it absorbs better. And I just learned that again just from podcasts, listening to a guy named Gary Brecka, which okay. he, Gary Brecka was the guy that trained Dana White to become a healthier, better person. So it intrigued me. Um, and I, in fact... If you look at all these kind of guys that are that are really, they're all doing cold plunges. They're all doing these things that are uh, improving their lifestyle to become better humans. Okay. Um, and 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 now in the last couple of years, I've been just studying biohacking, and biohacking is just how to live longer. Oh, because I go, we can have everything in the world, yeah. but if we don't have our health, it's all useless. Oh, that I agree. Right? I agree. Yeah. Health is, is the wealth. It's, it's, there's no... Exactly. Yeah, no so, so doubts about why it. not live in those means where, you know, you can better yourself by improving the way you feel every day. Like today, I did all my rituals this morning. Yeah. Um, you know, I did everything what I'm supposed to do, and I feel great. And, you know, if I missed all my morning rituals today, my energy level wouldn't Would be like this right now. Would not be the same, yeah. Right. I, I can relate to some extent about the gym side if I don't go to the gyms yeah. on weekdays. So I don't go Saturday, Sundays. Okay. I'm Monday to Friday. Yeah. But any day if I miss it yeah. on a weekdays. You're not which the same. Is, I'm not the same and I feel like I try to blame myself. I feel it from inside not happy about it. Like Correct. why the fuck I the didn't wake up in the morning? Right. Yeah, there's a guilt in there. Yeah, 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 I always yeah. have a guilt in my mind like, okay, yeah. why the fuck I didn't wake up in the morning? I didn't go to it. I let myself down. Like I'm not competing with somebody. Nobody it's say, yourself. Yeah, it's, it's yourself, right? No, you're right. But there's so many things to learn, Raj. What you told me is also there's more things I have to improve on it. I have to wake up. What time do you sleep? Uh, usually around, we're in bed around 8.30ish and I'm crashed oh. around 9.30. So my body's working good on, you know, anywhere from five to six and a half hours. Mm -hmm. It works. You know, the, some people say you need eight hours and everyone's built differently, but I've, I've always been a smaller sleeper. Right. Right. So, so, so 930 by the night. Yeah. So, so sleep. by nine, by, by, by three, 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 three o'clock, I'm up. So five and a half hours for six hours, I'm okay right, Amazing, to function, man. but okay. quality sleep. Yes. Right. I went, another thing of biohacking, I went and uh, bought this bed thing it's called eight sleep and uh it actually cools my bed to minus five at night and then it automatically raises the temperature uh throughout the night so when you you sleep better mm -hmm. on a cold bed and i started re reading on this and i started this about six seven months ago my sleep's gotten way better more deeper Oh, interesting. Okay. I thought yeah. the other way around when the bed is warm you sleep better than no that. no when you're because your body's so hot at night so, uh -huh. so at night, it's better to have a uh, sleep in a cold environment. It's, it's scientifically proven to be in colder in the evenings, you'll sleep deeper and then warm up throughout the night. So the bed does all this stuff. And then it tracks everything on me. It tracks my REM sleep, my deep sleep, my, you know, how much, uh, how much sleep I've had, uh, my, my heart rate throughout the night, all these things. It's tracking. And does when you're sleeping or while you're laying in the bed before you go into a deep sleep, does your brain still working, thinking about different thoughts? That is where the meditation comes in. I, at nighttime, always my brain's going a million, mi you know, mi million miles a minute. Yeah. Always I tell it, shut up, <laughs> right? I, I do the same thing. Like, I, <laughs> I go, tell myself, like, I shut go, up shut and Shut up, I go, you're in space now. You're floating, you're doing this, you're doing that. And, and then 20 minutes later, I pass out. <laughs> Yeah. So meditation again taught I'm me that. They that. go, oh, so this guy's trying to screw with me again tonight. No, I go, no. he wants to talk about this property tonight, does he? Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, he wants to I see how much so I relate myself with this. Like, okay, <laughs> what else I can do? How I can improve my business? What else the new ideas I can do it? Yeah, and you know, it's been it's been a challenge. It's always a challenge. That's why meditation is so important. Um, 
it's been a challenge always for me to tell myself that, hey, dude, at the end of the day, if you get a better rest, your next day is going to be even better. better. So why are we think about this right now? Yeah. Just shut up. We'll worry about it in the morning. Right. Yes. And that's not even doing the morning. Like one thing I'm trying to stay away from is my phone for the first hour. Yes. Because that's, that's, that's crazy. What's it is. It is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Especially with those yeah. reels. Once yeah. you get into it. Oh, yeah. Like I put it away usually at 8 p.m. Okay. And then I, and then I don't try not to touch it, uh, until, you know, six until most of my rot routines up. But the problem is the phone's also your music, your meditation, your everything. everything so you're grabbing there. it. So you're so <laughs> still there. <once>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, shit. <laughs> you know, I, now, I'm, now I'm looking at a reel. <laughs> uh, and, uh, Raj, uh, yeah. Coming back to the phone thing, are yeah. you more into social media or how often you want it? Or what's your opinion about social media? Is Social media, I think, is a very, very powerful tool. And it's obviously, it's changed people's lives. It's changed yes. businesses. It's changed a lot of things. The problem that we all have is that we waste a lot of time on it. Yes. Uh, and once we go down that rabbit hole, it's very easy to stay in the rabbit hole. Meaning the surfing and I go, oh, you know. And again, when you're doing this, it's complicating your brain so much. It's actually draining you. Yes. So it's, it's, you know, I always encourage people to limit it if you can, but I'm also guilty to, you know, to be on it too, too on much. It. Yes. Right. Um, I think it's a very powerful tool for certain people that you follow. Because if mm. I wake up in the morning and I'm watching a certain podcast that's been motivating me, um, you know, one example was that podcast when I bought this bed thing. Yes. Um, you know, I go, oh, that's, that's improving me. That, but then there's the other side where you can look at with... You know, a lot of people look at highlight reels of fancy cars or vacations or yeah. this or that. And then There's too many your, distractions. Yeah. And it. those distractions kind of, kind of put you in a downward swell. Like, oh man, I got to go to the uh, job site all day today. This guy's in Hawaii. Yeah. Why can't I'm not in Hawaii? I want to yeah. be in Hawaii. Exactly. Yeah. You wanted to start comparing. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that, then you start going down that negative mindset, yes. right? Always. Yeah. So you feel like. It, it's a challenge. And I, I think. This generation has it much harder than we even had it when we were growing up yeah. because we didn't have all that. We're just trying to catch up. Oh, Raj, I, yeah. it may sound surprising. Yes, I'm always on social media. My, not myself. Yeah. Yes, my videos are there. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't go to social media that often. I don't yeah. open up my TikToks for months. Yeah, yeah Literally yeah. for months. Facebook. Yeah. Same Done. thing. But Only thing is right Instagram and that too. Early in the morning when I'm drinking yeah. my coffee, videos. watching the reels. Videos. And sometimes I feel like talking to myself. What the fuck I'm doing watching these random people who I don't even know? Like, why I'm wasting my time? Yeah, I have yeah. to get over the, with this because I feel like that during 5.30 to 6 o'clock, I drink my coffee. Yes. And I waste my half an hour on watching stupid stuff. Like, I feel well, like, okay, and, fine. And, and I mean, in all honesty, too, I mean, you have to have some time for yourself. Sometimes you just enjoy it. Sometimes, like, you enjoy watching different podcasts or different huh. things like that. Or no, but I watch stupid things. Like, it's yeah, not that's informative. That's, yeah. a, that's 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 yeah, what yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, always yeah, have a regret. Yeah. I'm not able to overcome with that. Okay. Yeah. Why I'm watching this? Every yeah. morning, I say that I'm not going to watch it. Yeah. And I yeah. still watch it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, some yeah. people, like, I, I don't even know what it is. Back from India, people are there. Like, they, I'm watching them. <laughs> their, their vlogs and everything. The yeah, family yeah. vlogs no, and all right. the fuck. I said, yeah. what the fuck is this happening? No, and that's, that's the problem with social media is that there's so many different directions you can go. Like, you know, I... I try, when I post, I'll post my morning workout something or I'll say I'm up and the only reason I'm trying to do is put it up there so someone yeah. else wakes up yeah. and, and hopefully encourages them, right? Yes. But if I'm on there posting and I start looking at myself, I'm looking at something else too, then now I'm sitting on a bench press trying to do my chest workout yeah. and I've wasted 20 minutes <laughs> skimming and I'm like, what did I just do? Right? I hate the people when I go to gym, I don't talk to anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate people when they come in the middle of the set and they and start, start talking, talking to you. To you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then they will feel like, okay, dude, just move on. Let's, let's work, work oh, the workout. Been, funny there's thing a, is I haven't really gone to the gym. I just work out at home, but uh, that's been positive. Are you working from home? And yeah. how are you finding that working from home? Yeah, I'm, I enjoy it. I, like positive, going to gym from home, like, is yeah, it okay? Just like, I, I love it because I can self-motivate mm -hmm. however having said that when you actually physically in a gym with other people working you do work out harder yeah and, I and yeah that. there's no there's no question about that yeah. for me i just since covid i haven't been able to build that rut to get back into the gym because mm -hmm. i just built one uh, one at yes. home right yeah but i do need to transition out of that as well yeah i have a small setup too but i'm never able to do it i had a treadmill and the, some bench press the machine which it does everything yeah but yeah, i'm yeah. not able to do it like i don't get that drive in it the to drive, do it. Yeah. then there i feel like i wanted to go out yeah so, so. that i could go to gym see 
more people more getting people not even talking like i don't barely talk to somebody it's yeah. which is just watching yeah, yeah watching and it's not actually correct way to do it because i'm a realtor <laughs> i have to talk to more people and then i feel like well, okay this i'm come to yourself yeah i come here for a purpose yeah. every time i can't do yeah. networking no, i come no, here exactly. for a purpose to keep yeah. my health in check so let correct. me focus on that Yeah. networking can be done some other time too. Well, you know, and that's very important what you just said that you're exactly right, you're a realtor and we're all networking. We like to people, we like to talk to them, but you have to set aside time for yourself. And just yeah. this is me time. Yeah. Cuz the more, you know, the most importance you can have on anything in society is to make sure that you're in a good spot. Right. That's the only when you're happy, you're going to be generally happy for other people as well. Exactly. When you're yes. miserable, you're going to be miserable to other people yeah. as well. No, true. <laughs> right? Yeah. So so keeping yeah. yourself in check is important. <laughs> 100%. So now Raj, we have done all the serious talk. Let's go before we end up this podcast. Yeah. We wanted to know or rather I wanted to know personally and I definitely think a lot of the viewers would like to know what is Raj Aadmi other than the work? What he likes and what he doesn't like it or how he spent his best of the time, what he does. Lately, uh well, okay, well before I'm a car fanatic. Okay. I love cars. <laughs> yes, I know that. You right, have Maybach, so, you have yeah, 911. Uh, 911. I, I, I'm switching every year. Okay. Uh, like, you know, McLaren, uh, we have Lamborghini coming in the next couple months. Amazing. Uh, uh, got, I'm always switching, but I'm like a kid in a candy so store. So when you say cars. the switching is how often you switch it? Every year or two. I'm, I'm swapping is cars it? out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, okay, interesting. So I, do, I do you a, don't you lose the money on it than the depreciation on it? No, the the advantage. I mean, you depreciate, but you depreciate the same as uh, in most cases that you do if you're going to keep it for two or three years. Hmm. So in the first year, I usually try to get the latest greatest of whatever car I right. like. Um, and most cases, they le- when it's so new, there's not that many out there. They're going to lose the lease because I'll be the first yeah. one to give it back. Yes. So if mine's first back in the first one in the used market, it's going to depreciate the least. And this reason is because you just is a business sense behind it, or just a you're a car fanatic and you wanted to get over both you, combination get bored bored with one car combination of uh, business sense and not losing ton of money on it. Mm. And I do get bored of the cars usually after a year or two. Like you know okay. if we get um, you know if we get a you know a new you know the new G wagons coming yes. out. Yes, I want to make sure I get that G wagon right, and then I'll be bored of it in a year and I'll swap it for something else that comes out okay. new. Uh, or you know it'll be like. The this uh, new 911 turbo hybrids coming out, right? Okay. Uh, so I okay. Now's the rest time to get rid of my 911 because it's still holding a little strong. When this new one launches, I know mine's gonna tank. Tank, yeah. But yeah. I'm not that excited about as much as yeah. I was when I first bought it. Anyway, so I don't care if I don't have it, right? And I'll wait until the new one comes. So when you buy it, these cars, you go for a long drive, or what? What? How you? Oh, yeah, it depends on which car it is. Mm. Like in the 911, for that's a great car to take on the track. So yes. I'd race them, right? Uh, yeah, it'll be a fun car there, or uh, or you know for the lamborghinis usually you have great networking events yes you know you'll go on trips together with other uh, lamborghini enthusiasts um you'll build your network great yeah. for real estate right i'm sure the ferrari helps quite a bit no brother <laughs> i have to admit that i'm lacking on that side of a networking actually yeah. i want to after this podcast i'm going to take the yeah. some piece of advice from you how to do it because yeah. i haven't taken my ferrari anywhere okay so all you got to do i mean it's very simple and any car when you're a car enthusiast especially when you have a cars like that they have so much value in just connecting you with other people. Yes. Uh, and most other people that are, have cars like that are successful themselves in their own right. Yes. Um, so having those connections and those, that car is your foot in the door. It's like, you know, why oh, do I people, agree. I 100% yeah, agree. And yeah. that's what I wanted to work on it. I lack on that. It yeah. may surprise that I'm, I don't do much of a networking. I don't yeah. go to the networking events. I, I'm kind of a, say that kind of a boring person yeah. i like to go home <laughs> yeah. and just stay home oh, and that's watch good TV. too <laughs> like, no but in the business point of view yeah, i feel yeah, like okay yeah. imagine if i can start going to those networking and i have a ferrari why don't i go and meet the people who own the well, ferrari let me ask you why did you buy the ferrari i just liked it that's why honestly there was no business reason behind it like i wanted to so you play. always liked liked ferraris and no, you always wanted one no 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 just now no. no okay so as i said it in the beginning too i didn't plan it to come like strategically okay i would say i would lie if i say ferrari was my dream car to be yeah. honest at that time when i came to canada even bmw was a big deal for me to right. have it right. so coming to the ferrari was completely out of my league yeah i thought about ferrari last year in 2023 yeah january okay and i went to ferrari dealership in vancouver yeah they showed me all the specs and everything so i said okay good uh, they were saying at that time 535 something 5 uh, f8 the yeah, one yeah f8 yeah so i said okay good i wanted to book it yeah 
They said, no, you cannot. I said, yeah, what do you mean? Yeah. They said, it's not coming anymore. So I said, why are you showing me then? Yes. <laughs> he said, that because you are a client, so we sure you did. But yeah. there are other Ferraris which can sell you. Okay. So they showed me the California one. Right. That is the starting league. Yes. And they said, no, this is used. I wanted to buy a brand new. They said, you can't buy a brand new. Okay. Right. Then mm -hmm. I look into deeply, okay, why there is no brand yes. new Ferraris out there? Then I find it out, this is not a depreciated asset. It is yes. going to appreciate. appreciate. Yeah. Because there is not any more... Combustible Com engine is coming. F8 is the... the, the, the Ferrari the does brand it. Brand like, is very strong. Yeah, brand is there. And Ferrari yeah. has that. They built one brand or one in type of a car and they stop. Then yeah. they go to a different production. They will never repeat that. Right. So number of cars only will come in. Like, for example, Correct. F8 Spider, limited. there's not many. They're, they're limited. Yes. Then I thought, okay, it's a good business strategy too for me. Right. And I will have a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. Because in my family, nobody had the Ferrari before. Of course. So I will have a Ferrari. Right. Let's it's a do check it. mark on you. Yes. Yeah. And then I look into the numbers wise, okay... I ended up buying for more premium. I have to pay. It's a brand new. Yeah. I ended up buying it for Montreal. Yeah. So it cost me close to seven hundred thousand dollars, including GST. So you paid a, pre you paid a premium. Yeah, I paid a premium. <coughs> but when I was doing the negotiation, because I was buying it at the time when nobody's buying it. Correct. Same strategy. I did it. What I do it in real estate. So yes. I negotiated with the person ever there. I said, yeah. okay, you have this F8. The gentleman is selling to me without taking it out of the dealership. Yeah. I wanted to do the same thing next time. This time I'm getting a premium. I will pay the premium. Yes. Hundred thousand dollars. Yes. Just to get into the box. Into the box, yeah. But the you are coming the SUV, which is oh, that Ferrari. gorgeous. I wanted an allocation of that. Yeah. He said I can try. I said, No trying. Yeah, it's it has that's to part be a of the deal. deal. And I bluff with him. There yeah. was already, I was almost signing a documents with Calgary dealership. They yeah. had the same F8. Yeah. But they said we will try to get you into allocation. Vancouver said it. Fuck off. No, right. not happening. Right. So I said, okay. Calgary said that we will try. So I just bluffed with the rep in there, said that, listen, this is the specs in Calgary. I'm about to sign the paper. Yeah. And this is Sunday conversation. So you right. have until Monday. Talk to your manager. If you put guarantee me the allocation, then I will buy it. Okay. The Ferrari. And yeah. I'll pay you the premium because one time I will pay it. Yeah. Next time I don't want it. Correct. Magically, everything happened. <laughs> he put me into the allocation. It's coming next year. So I will have a Ferrari. For for that thing yeah. is insane. Bro, he uh, called me about yeah. two uh, two months ago. Yeah. The MRSP is 535. He said, do you want to sell it for 700? Yeah. I said, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, not yeah, selling yeah, it. Yeah, I put up $100,000 as a deposit, but right. I said, no, I'm not going to sell it. Yeah. It, 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 you, you can drive that for a couple of years and you exactly. still won't lose. Yeah, yeah, I won't yeah, lose it. Yeah, yeah, so it's a yeah. good business strategy too, coming to the point, why did I buy Ferrari or why? It's a good business strategy too. Yes, it will give me... But that the, wasn't your initial thing. No, no, yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a fluke, you could say it. Like yes. I wasn't planned it. Okay, I will yeah. get one day a Ferrari or nothing. Yes. Just, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. My goal is like, I don't overthink or don't overcomplicate the things. Yeah. As it comes, I make sure I do my due diligence properly oh, at okay. that time. Exactly. And yeah, I said, yeah. okay, yes, I had to put a decent amount of down payment yep. to buy the Ferrari. I said, okay, yep. I own decent amount of real estate. I have heavily yep. invested. My 80% of money, I go into real estate. Right. Parks are there. And, yes. And cash. Two things is, yes, that's an asset <laughs> guild. Secondly, we realtors, I get distracted with the money when there's, it's a yeah. kind of an easy money, you can say it. Yes. Of course. Comparing the other people out there. <laughs> of course. Yeah, and I'm being, I'm being very honest. Yes, we well, make one decent one big check and a big yes. commission. Yeah, is nice. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So it distracts when you have a decent amount of money sitting in your bank. Correct. It keeps me on my toes. Yeah. I'm buying real estate. And if something goes wrong, I will sell one of the property. Well, and, and more yeah. importantly, your money in the bank is not doing anything for exactly. you. It's actually devaluing. Yes, uh, and it keeps me on toes that, okay, I have to keep doing it. Yes. Because I have to pay the bills, so yes. I have to make sure. But back of the mind, I know, okay, these properties <coughs> which I have it will help me. If I get stuck somewhere, I can Correct. sell one of them, and yep. liquidate it, and take the asset on it. So I thought, okay, there's already, I have a decent amount of properties. Why don't I buy a Ferrari now? Correct. It's an investment. It's yes. not depreciating. So I'm considering it just like a real estate. Like a real estate deal. Real estate yeah, deal. Yeah, it yeah, is a real yeah, estate. Yeah, I put $200,000 down. Yeah. And then leased then, it out. Yeah. And paying the money. Yeah. Monthly then, leases. Monthly yeah. yeah. It's a three-year lease. Yes. It's coming out. And then that's what I'm trying to And you're going to get all that money back anyways at the end of the term because the exactly. cars are worth very similar it will. to what it's worth. It yeah. will. Yeah. 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 These yeah. not going to be so... Uh, which I didn't know it before. Yes. Now yeah. I know it. Yes. Certain cars you can do that. A lot of cars you can't. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I know the Lamborghini Huracan. Yeah. Yeah. Not the, the yeah. it's called Avatar, the one which opens the door. The, I, I got that the Revolto coming. Revolto, okay. Yeah. So those are different, right? So the, the one which is you starting the league, yeah. they don't have an appreciation in there. Yeah, I mean, Lamborghini now is starting to actually get some whole, I mean, strength behind it. Before, yes. it was all Ferrari. Ferrari and Porsche were the strongest brands. Yeah, Porsche 911 yeah, was nine very were, I mean, they, they, was, they held really strong. Yes. Lamborghini over the years was weak, but now they're actually starting, I mean, I could probably get my allocation for $300,000 lift. There you go. Uh, for a you know almost a nine hundred thousand dollar car. Yeah. Um, so 
I mean, but I would never give it up. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. Now it has helped me, <coughs> given me. A, I would not say that. I won't shy away it's saying that it give me a recognition. Yeah. And I find it funny that I'm the same person. I tell Maria, Maria, my team member too, and my wife. I'm the same guy. Yeah. The day yeah. I purchased the Ferrari. Oh yeah. My yeah. recognition. People don't look into my assets. I had already those assets, the Fire. real estate, right. but they don't look at. I have a beautiful house in White Rock. They didn't look up to that side. The day I purchased it, the Ferrari, the image of the person has changed. Perception has changed. I can tell you a good. I mean, that uh, everyone that talks to me about exotic cars always laugh because I'm like, it, people are funny. Their perception of you in a expensive car is like you're, you know, you've made it. But prior to that, you could have a $25 million asset sitting exactly. somewhere and that has no value. No value. No. And I'm like, I don't How, get it. Exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I still don't get it. Like, I, I have a yeah. decent amount of real estate and yeah. I didn't get that kind of uh, recognition in... But now, all of a sudden, I feel like I can tell, I can feel it. Yes, yes. it has changed. Yeah, 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 but yeah, that yeah. was never been planned. Right. This this has come, and I will. I do. I love it. Yes, I love it. Yeah, I enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yes, I'm getting it. Driving yeah. the Ferrari, but yes. No, and then that's why it's, it goes back to now the Ferrari. You've used it. You got it for the right reasons, but you that car can also open up now a whole other things that you're not used to by these networking. Exactly. And that's, that's what I have to work on. Yeah. Right? And, that, I, and just becoming part of these Ferrari clubs. Yes, I'll, right. I will. Yes, I'll, I will definitely work on these things too because I have to. I know this oh. thing is one side of mine is which is lacking. Right. Is networking. Yeah. yeah I yeah, have to yeah, do yeah. more networking. And it, it's it, you know that'll open up a whole other. Um, aspect of business, you know, which you'll be shocked. Like you know, a guy might say, you know, one of the guys that I met when the you know in the Lambo Club was into pharma pharmacies, pharmaceuticals, and I'm like, yeah. you know, and he wanted to do some business together around there, and, and there are medical clinics. I'm like, oh, I didn't think of that. And the cash flow there was massive. So amazing. So, so it's just those networks, and I go, and when you're like-minded people, they're all into cars. You talk the same thing. You talk the same language. You're all in the business. You want to work together. No, I agree. Raj, I feel like we need to do probably a second series <laughs> of podcasts because I love talking to you, brother. No, I can no, relate no. so much. No. Uh, this is the one of the main reason I wanted to talk to you because you being yes. successful and your mindset, I have just absorbed the energy from you and I've learned so many things out of this podcast. I, no, thank you. I, yeah. I can confidently say that the, my viewers also have learned some, most of the things from you, Raj, and no, we you. look up to you, brother. No, and I really appreciate it because my I would... I wanted it, but Emmanuel has already been signed me three times. Jazz, we have passed one hour. I wanted to continue this conversation. Didn't feel like it. Yes, yeah, that feel like it. Probably we have to come again, guys. Put it in the comments if you wanted Raj Admi to come and tell more about the business sides and all other sides. You, I may have missed it. I yeah. was wanted yeah. to talk more, yeah. but yes, yeah. the time is the challenge here. So, okay. thank you, Raj. Thank, thank you. you. Really thank you appreciate it. I know you're a busy person, and spending thank a time you. means a lot. I'll, it was a pleasure talking no, to you. It was such brother. a pleasure being here no, with you as thank well. Thank you, brother. So, thank thank you. you. Thanks, thank guys. You. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.